What's up guys, Bloodshed here, bringing you the Monk starter build guide for Diablo 3 patch 2.6.6 and season 18. In these videos, we take you from zero to hero, show you every step of the process, and yes, timestamps will be in the description. And so yeah, we start early and then we go all the way to late game recommendations. The best way to start off any season is to save your challenge rift bag. So typically the challenge rift resets on Mondays, and if you don't do it, you can save it till Friday after you create a seasonal character. So then you create your seasonal character and then do your challenge rift. And then, then boom, you start the season off with these materials here on the screen. It's really powerful. If you're just looking at the stuff, you can unlock all your professions right away. You can you have blood shards. You can roll for level one blood shards right out the gate at level one. You can't use them right away, but you can use them at level 16 is when they become available. Or you can run and get the cube at level 1. You can put the legendaries in the cube, and in that way you're a low level, and now you have a cubed legendary property, your entire process, your entire season. It's really powerful. It also saves you if you want to skip doing bounties for the season journey and you just want to play and just grind. You can actually keep stuff without actually doing bounties. And then, you know, you have like materials to reroll gear at 70. You can even do like an upgrade with your death's breath. You can upgrade a level 70 weapon at level 40, which will I'll link a video in the description of how to really utilize the challenge drift bag. That'll be in the description. So check for that challenge drift bag video in the description if you don't know how to utilize it properly. So now that you know what we get, let's go ahead and bring it up on screen here and talk about level one blood shard recommendations, because typically you're going to spend your blood shards right away. And if anything, you'll go over if you don't, right? So this is the D3 planner data. This shows you what you can get at level one on a monk. So we're going to expand all. And these are all the possible outcomes you can get at level one. So you can get the squirts necklace. This got revamped this patch. It gives us 100% damage increase. But we don't really want to roll amulets because they cost so many blood shards. You want to roll low cost blood shards, right? You can roll one necklace or you can get four pairs of boots, right? So. Um, this season around, we're getting the Innes set, so we're going to go for Boots. Uh, Rivera Dancers synergize nicely with Innes. Anything, actually, synergizes nicely with Innes. It's an all-purpose set. It kind of just buffs every ability. And the Crudus Boots is the big money maker here, though, once you get your 6-piece. Before you get your 6-piece, they're kind of okay. They're good. They give you double ally, so you get double, double fire ally, for instance, where you can get like 20% damage instead of 10 but once you get your six piece, this like doubles your damage. This is really powerful for that. So we're gonna roll boots. And if you get the crudest boots right away, I would keep rolling and try to get the Rivera Dancers. You can also, if you get the boots right away, maybe you go for Bracers. So this whole starter build is gonna revolve around basically no gear, bare bones, and you don't need Rivera Dancers if you follow my guide but they do make it easier having a 300% multiplier like LTK. If you do get the boots, you can make the call to go for Bracers. Caesar's Memento gives you 800% damage to Tempest Rush, which is really good. Uh, Gundo Gear allows EP to proc off itself, basically, and the whole map just lights up. This is really good. You do have to pop it, though. I'd recommend Fire while you're leveling and Cold once you hit 70. And then Pinos Pride is for Wave of Light, a nice little bump on Wave of Light. You can actually use that as well. So I'd roll boots. I try to get the crudest boots. And if you want to keep going for Rivera, that's cool. And if you want to go into bracers, that's cool also. If you get the crudest boots and the Rivera dancers and you want to be a little cheeky, right? You want to maybe push your luck a little bit further. You can wait till level 19 and go back and roll the rest of your blood shards. And something interesting happens. You have a chance to get Leoric's crown, the see no evil, or the actual LTK helmet. So you can be fully decked out in LTK. The boots give you a 300% multiplier to LTK and the helmet does up to 1400. It shoots out a fireball. It's in crazy powerful. It's best in slot for LTK at level 70. So I'd probably wear one and cube one. If the helmet rolls a socket, I'd probably just sit with the helmet the rest of the, the rest of the one to 70 or you know if the boots yeah, because typically you have to sit on one of them. You can only put one thing in the cube. If you get nothing, it's totally fine. Um, as you're leveling up, make sure to check the fence vendors in every town. You can see right here, they're going to have rings and amulets. You probably want to check back at around level 10. You also want to save low level legendaries for cubing. So like if you get like a level 63 or a level 14 item, you can actually cube them and get their full power later on. 
that's really good. Also while leveling you want to focus on red gems, they give you plus damage. So typically while leveling you don't have enough crit to take advantage of the crit damage. Like if you never crit, then crit damage also doesn't matter. So the plus damage you get, you can see it says weapon damage plus 160. This is for a marquee gem. I would just put red gems in your weapons and then red gem in your helmet. You get an XP boost actually. So it says helm, you get a 33% XP boost. And I would basically do that red while leveling, green once you're 70. The type of skills and abilities you want to use for monk is definitely your, your cheat death if you're playing on hardcore. You won't get this for a while, but you want to equip this as soon as possible. Um, one thing that's really good is seize the initiative. You're going to constantly encounter elites and enemies in your travels and seize the initiative just gives you a crazy attack speed steroid and it synergizes nicely with these big generators that Monk has. So Monk has Crippling Wave Mangle. I would literally use this 1 to T11. Mangle's so powerful and it synergizes with other things like Mage Fist and cinder code and things like that that'll cover your generators uh for spenders i would do low cost spenders and build off of any legendaries i get if you get like the wave of light weapon or the ltk boots any kind of anything that you can build off of for your spender go that direction and i'll show you some of the spenders right here so ltk is really good i'd probably go for vulture clock kick but because it does put a dot on the target and single target Rift Guardians are probably your hardest thing as a monk while leveling. That's one reason why I use the Fire EP, because it just puts this nice 2000 damage dot on the Rift Guardian and allows you to kill it. The AoE is pretty easy because of the exploding um, palm and sweeping winds and just overall AoE is pretty easy. It's the single target that gets us. Monk has a lot of cool stuff like you can get this Tempest Rush item or like I said, like a flying dragon. So just use any kind of multipliers. You should be totally fine. Monks has it pretty easy while leveling. Here is the wave of light. This would be the best thing to get because it reduces the spirit cost and increases the damage. The wave of light weapon's really good. Don't forget when you hit 40, you can craft a level 70 weapon because of the challenge rift bag, we we're able to unlock the blacksmith all the way. You can craft one with the level reduce requirement up to 30. So you can actually roll this and I'm going to link the challenge rift bag video in the description. Definitely watch it. It covers all this stuff. So don't forget to do that at level 40. And then once you hit about level 61, ROS gear starts to drop. So I'll show you like right here. So it's level 61 is when we start getting the Reaper of Souls level gear. You can get some really good rings with double crit, main stat. And when once you hit 70, hopefully you have some double crit items saved up. You want to look for things with double crit and main stat everywhere. That's going to be your bread and butter. If you can get cooldown, that's great. But just getting the early game crit is really important. Life on hit on one of your weapons is kind of nice, but we are a little tanky. It's not so necessary. The life on hit's good. I would go with life on hit over like area damage or damage percent or even attack speed. It just is going to give you that early game tankiness just along with the main stat as well. So this is like a perfect item to look at. And like right here, I've got a double crit, a double main stat ring. Just you want those raw stats just to carry you through the early torments until you get like your six piece bonuses and stuff like that. So you're 70, what do you do? You wanna definitely do your season journey. That way you get your uh, two and four piece in a set. I'm gonna have build links in the description for everything, but this is like a mock-up starter build that you would use. You're gonna be attacking really fast because you have season the initiative. You have cooldown to proc blinding flash, blinding flash, also procs Relentless Assault. It does 20% increased damage when enemies are blind or frozen or stunned. And you're going to be dropping EPs. And we're going to kind of showcase this early game build on a GR20 clear. But just to give you an example, this is a really good starter set. You should be right on T1. If you build properly, like we said, you should be able to walk right through. So I tested this with no Paragon, no Augments, all baseline gems. It's just the armory saves max level gems because you can't save low level gems, unfortunately. If you're on hardcore, I'd probably drop um, Beacon for the cheat death, I suppose, at this low level. That way you have that extra um, get out of jail free card in case you get proc'd. As you go through and get your four piece in a set, boom, let's equip it and do our GR20 clear. Another thing to note while I take these gems off, the first legendary gem you get every single season is Bane of the Powerful. It's always the first one that drops. So if you just go do a GR1, you can actually get a 20% damage increase right out the gate, and it's really helpful. As soon as you kill any elite, you're pretty much set up the rest of the rift. You can keep chaining it together. 
and have that extra power. So I tested it without the Bane of the Powerful and nothing in the cube that's going to affect my testing, right? This is super bare bones, like, you know, nothing. Like, look at these weapons, you know, no Paragon or anything like that. And this is going to go for all my future starter videos. Another thing to note about this season specifically is the Sage's Journey set. The Sage set is automatically learned at rank 12. So since we're unlocking the blacksmith at level one, you technically can craft a sage set right away, right? So as soon as you hit 70, make sure you craft your sage set. And Inez is really special. They can actually fit it in right away. Or I guess you would need a ring of royal grandeur. So this is what it would look like with the sage set, for instance. Pretend um, sage also added a belt, by the way. If you guys don't know, a belt has been added to the set. So necros, every set in the game can use a sage set now because of the addition to the belt. So for instance, this is what it would look like. You'd have a belt slot here, and then you'd wear the sage helm or something like that. Or you can do the sage boots and then wear the belt. So you can easily fit it in right away. This is really gonna help the early game death breaths. So don't forget that you have the power to craft a sage set as soon as you ding 70. You can also kill Malthiel as soon as you hit 70 and get your Reaper's Wrap. So Mouth is right here. It can be on any difficulty. You just go run and kill them as long as you're 70 though. And you get the pattern for Reaper's Wraps. Reaper's Wraps um, give you a lot of resource, especially if you're using something intensive like um, LTK or even Wave of Light, it would help you early on. So why can't I find the Reaper's Wraps? <laughs> Here we go. Health Globes restore 30% of your primary resource and you can craft it again right away and it just gives you more utility early game. Also, before we do the GR20 clear, you might wanna know what you spend your blood shards on. You might have some leftover blood shards from leveling, or maybe you found a goblin, and you might wanna know what to spend your shards on. I would always focus on 25 cost items that give you the biggest impact. So it depends what I have, but typically I'd probably go for shoulders to get those Lefebvre shoulders. I go for bracers to get Nemesis bracers, or you know the wave of light bracers or the tempest rush bracers if you don't have the crudest boots yet maybe you go for boots here or uh, you can always go back and make a level one monk also and roll and get that lower item pull that we talked about right so remember this is the item pull at 70 let me show you boom like tons of stuff right like if you want a squirts necklace for your cube good luck trying to roll right but if you roll at level one Boom, that's the only one that you can get. So you can actually put a Squirts Necklace in the cube really quick. And that goes for like the crudest Boots. It just significantly lowers the item pull. So you can kind of manipulate or increase your odds on uncertain items. So we're gonna jump in now. Just remember this is with completely bare bones stuff. You're gonna have way better time than I'm gonna have. I'm gonna go ahead and pop Sweeping Winds and I'm gonna apply EP and I'm gonna try to pop EP basically. And Blinding Flash lets them take more damage, okay? So I'm gonna jump in, Sweeping Wind, start attacking, put an EP, and then just pop the EP and Blinding Flash. So EP, hit them, they die, things burn. It's really powerful. I was surprised how chill Monk has been this whole process. We're gonna showcase a starter level 60 build also. And with literally nothing, we're able to get through the content. And it makes me really happy because you don't have to do, we don't have to rely on any RNG whatsoever with the build. Let me get some, let me get some big elite kills here to showcase it. And like I talked about earlier, the fire EP really takes care of like the um, Rift Guardian. It helps you with that single target tremendously. And this is without the, um, this is with the cooldown base passive. Again, if you're on hardcore, make sure you use the, make sure you use your cheat death. It's really important. So we're kind of working these guys in. You're going to have the Triune rings, but I don't want to stand in too many Oculus rings here. So you're definitely going to have the Triune. So you're going to have a bigger damage buff than that even. There we go. We got one kill. Here the second one's almost dead. You can see the fire on him. Let me not attack him. The fire ticks away and it does help a lot. The fire EP doing, doing work. I guess we have our ally also helping out as well. So don't, don't forget about the ally. It's nice. It just, it's just there ticking away. And we have full resource anyway because we're more of a generator build. This is utilizing Mangle. And you can see how tanky I was. I did have to pop a potion one time, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I did let Sweeping Winds. Sweeping Winds actually freezes them and increases our survivability. And um, the Blinding Speed with Dashing Strike increases our dodge. That's more survivability. So it's pretty hardcore friendly. I'm probably going to play Monk myself. So I wanted to make sure that we do hardcore recommendations this season. It is going to be my first solo self-found hardcore season. 
and I wanted to make sure that you know we look out for the hardcore bros here and there and just kind of let you guys know what I would do during the process. So I think we showcased it enough. We're going to go ahead and show you the next phase. But this is like a tankier version with cheat death, and then this is without cheat death, right? So typically on softcore, we can go a little bit more ballsy with it. I'll showcase the hardcore build this time around. Let me switch the gems. This is always, this is always the most annoying part, is taking off the higher gems to put on the lower ones. If you're using something intensive, like um, Lashing Tail Kick, because there is no reduced cost resource for LTK, um, you can use a, like a Topaz to get that extra reduced cost resource. But since I'm not using that, we're just using the generator version of the build. I'm going to drop in cooldown for more flashes and serenities. And it basically makes you immune to damage for four seconds. So it's really good. And CC as well. So you can see we have our six piece equipped. If we had the crudest boots, it would our damage would be actually insane. We were farming T11 on stream today with just this ghetto gear and crudest boots in the cube. But I'm going to again use nothing just to kind of showcase the power of Inez. Inez is really good and it's fairly tanky. If you notice, we don't have any mantras anywhere. This might be one of your questions. You get all mantras without even using it. That's what the set, the four piece does. The four piece gives you the base effect of all mantras. So you always have them no matter what. We're on T7. Let's go ahead and jump in and kind of showcase the power without really changing the build much. This is very close to the other version of the build. And again, if you had, um, let's say you had LTK, you might drop off Serenity for LTK, or you can drop off EP for Wave of Light, depending on what abilities you have. And those would be your two things that you build off of, right? So whatever you get, use swap out EP, or you can even swap out Serenity, depending on if you're on Hardcore or Softcore. E7, let's go. Same thing, we're just gonna pop Sweeping Winds. And honestly, if I just sit back, maybe you guys will see the power. Actually, we should not even attack. How about that? I'll show you guys the power of Inez. Inez is a generic buff, so it buffs anything versus other things like Pestilence or whatever, like you need to use specific skills. Inez just gives you a generic damage buff, almost like Lawn in a way. You can look at it like Lawn. You can just build however you want and just wear the Inez set. You don't even have to think about the set. So it's kind of cool. You can see us standing here and our allies are just wiping the floor with everybody. And it's pretty nice, man. It gives you a nice start and you're pretty tanky like we talked about. I'm gonna go ahead and start DPSing though. I wish this was a better map. Uh, I don't wanna grab that. I don't wanna showcase the power. And um, yeah, we start DPSing here. So you punching also does help and you can put on EPs. Again, if you had LTK, you would swap EP for LTK or if you had Wave of Light or even Tempest Rush if you wanna do that. I'm gonna include starter videos for all this stuff. I'll actually show you what they look like after we do a little bit of killing here. Hey, and then you can pop the allies, you do a nice big nuke and kill everything with your mystic ally button. Let's pick up the globes and head to the next floor. This is a little bit better of a floor. I didn't even keep up my sweeping winds because you really don't even need it. So you can actually swap out sweeping winds for one of those other buttons if you want to keep EP for whatever reason. So it would just basically be another build. But this is kind of nice because you don't really need anything with it. So you can see how powerful Inez is. And if you had Ingeom, oh my god, that would be crazy. Or something similar to give you movement speed. Also, if you want to use the Diabo, you can. I prefer fist weapons because you attack faster and you're popping EP faster. But like a lot of these are built off of your weapon damage. So you would have stronger wave of lights. You'd have stronger mystic allies if you use a two-hander because that's what it's based off of. And you would attack slower and waste resource slower also. So sometimes you might want to use a two-hander Especially if you're using like, um, if you're going to run out of resource anyway, you might as well hit hard with the resource that you do have. So it just might depend, but overall I like fist weapons more. The best thing you can probably build into with Inez is probably the Wave of Light version. It looks like this right here. Uh, this is from my boy Ki Yurasa. Can't ever pronounce his name properly, so you guys can make fun of me in the comments. Anyway, he's uh, regularly a top 10 monk here in Diablo. You should definitely follow him on Twitch. I'll put a link to his Twitch in the description. But yeah, this should be tankier than Sun Wuko, but Sun Wuko should do slightly more damage. This build will take you really far. He has it at about a 120 to 125, and I agree, it's around 125. Maybe even higher with more Paragon, right? It takes advantage of the new Squirt's Necklace. If you don't know about the Squirt's Necklace, it uh, does 100% damage when you're... It gives you 100% damage when you're not taking damage. Even if this gets nerfed to 50%, it'll be really good for a lot of builds, right? We don't know how it's going to... We haven't got the final patch notes yet, but, um, you know, I'll make sure he updates the build for you guys in the description. Wait, this is mine. This is the Wave of Light, yeah. So 
I'll make sure he updates this if there's any issues here, but this is what you would go to, right? So when you're asking me what's a role, you would kind of see what you don't have. Like Lefebvre's is used in his build. And then this is an Inna's build. This is an Inna's LTK build that I made like uh, last year. And I'm going to update this, but um, even this build will work just fine, right? So Lefebvre's is used in both since Inna's doesn't have a shoulder anyway. And then he has the Penos Pride and I have Nemesis Bracers. I have a Scarbringer, which buffs LTK, and he has the Cairo Blade, which buffs Wave of Light. So it's very similar. It depends what you get. We both use the Rapid Strike. We both use um, Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. So a lot of this stuff, this would be like your shopping list if you want to know what to roll, what to upgrade. You definitely want to upgrade Fist Weapons. You can also play Generator Monks. Um, I have them on my tier list. So if you don't know, we put out a tier list here on the channel. And I'll put a link to that in the description for you guys. In the description, we have a bunch of builds for like Inna's Gen and a lot of different builds in general. So it's just a nice resource to have. Overall, I'd say Monk's an incredible start to the season. It's used in like the push meta. You can be used in various speed meta comps. It's not necessarily in rat runs. Rat runs are like the, the best version to speed farm Paragon, but it's used in a lot of different compositions and it's really good for twos and threes even. It's like the best healer tank kind of person to keep your group alive. Um, it's the fastest key farmer in the game. Overall, pretty solid build. Flashy fun. You can push with Yuliana's. There's all kinds of builds. I'll put as much resources in the description that I can. Uh, but I wanted to really focus on Inna since that's what you're going to be building into. And then you can branch out from there to whatever you f whatever your heart desires, chat. Ooh, these are long videos, man. <laughs> it's kind of weird that he's dancing and they're all standing there like robots or like <laughs> stoic. Like Diablo's kind of Diablo's kind of grooving in the back there, actually. So he's not alone. Never dance alone, okay? Well, that wraps up the video today. If you want to support the channel, you can always uh, check me out. Patreon.com slash bloodshed. You can support there. Um, I'm also going to revamp the page and put all my builds there free for everybody. So nothing's gated by any content. Right? I've never done any sponsored videos on YouTube or anything like that. Everything's there for you guys. You can follow me at twitch.tv slash bloodshed. I'm going to be streaming there all season long. I might have like a schedule, but I'll be doing Monday through Saturday, six days a week, Diablo 3. We have a weekly podcast, which we cover here on the channel. You can check that out as well. I'll just basically have the description lit with as much as much stuff as I can to help you guys out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helps you. Always, if you can, like the video. That does help. Um, YouTube likes likes, I guess, these days. So yeah. Anyways, I can ramble on and on. Thank you so much for watching. This is the Bobo Bo Bo Bloodshed, and I'm out of here. Peace.